All right, so in today's video, here it is, a new package from Parts Express, a new subwoofer. Let's do this. The package hasn't fared that well in shipping, so I'm hoping everything inside is uh, in perfect word working order. Every time I seem to order a sub, it seems to get demolished in shipping. I actually would have thought Parts Express would have put a little bit more effort into the packaging, but that's just what I personally thought. I don't know if there's anything Parts Express could fix from their end. I guess they can't affect the, the way the package gets handled uh, in post, but I guess if they had a little bit more packaging inside, possibly, uh, the box wouldn't get as crushed. But anyway, let's make our way. Oh, let's just listen to this noise. Oh, yes. Well, there is packaging. So, this stuff here, to me, awesome at the moment is really, really good because we're moving house, so I need this stuff for moving boxes. Let's just have a quick look. Here's my receipt. That's everything I ordered. Awesome. So, here we have a familiar box here. Precision ports. We use these on my Dayton towers here. I was extremely impressed with them. So I ordered a three inch precision port for this subwoofer build. Uh, as well as that, inside of here, we have Interesting branding on the box. Seems to be a little bit pushed out here on the side. We have the Young SD500 500 watt active plate amplifier. I'm gonna stick this just up here. I chose this over the Dayton one because it was a bit cheaper, much, much lighter, so much, much cheaper shipping options for me. And uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna see, test the water a little bit with some other brands that aren't Dayton Audio. Uh, I say that as I'm about to lift out a Dayton Audio subwoofer here. Oh, that is a really hard angle. Ultimax 10 inch. Oh yes, let's move that box to the side. Uh, I see inside here, there are some discount codes. Uh, so are these all different? Are they all different? Two are the same. However, I will show these to the camera so you guys can use these if you wish to. But let's move that big box out of the way now. It's still in the frame. Let's just push, oh no, it wasn't in the frame. That's my carpet over here. What am I doing? Anyway, Ultimax 10. <laughs> it's a subwoofer that I've wanted since I discovered Parts Express. So the fact that today I'm gonna be opening an Ultimax 10, let's just, let's just listen to this noise. Oh yes, here we go. The Ultimax 10 inch, and we are greeted with a box. Whoa. Oh my, that's surround. Oh, the weight. Oh. I think, besides, there's a fair amount of packaging in the bottom there to support the magnet. Besides my oh, Valadine subwoofer, this may be the only 10 inch sub I've ever had. <laughs> Oh my God, let's lift this up for the camera. That is the size of my head, that's a 10 inch. We got a big magnet boot on the back here. Does that come off? Um, I'm sure it does, I'm sure I just can't do it. But I believe this has a double stacked magnet on the back. This is 500 watts RMS and a 10 inch woofer. That surround is unbelievably ridiculous. I'll get some close up shots for you guys right now so you can look at it up close uh, because my camera is about two meters away from me. Stiff as that cone just feels solid. Man, I am, oh my God. Push terminals, this is a dual two ohm voice coil subwoofer. The uh, terminal on the left there is a little bit crooked, but can't really complain too much about that. This subwoofer looks nice, I cannot wait. This, in case you don't know, uh, as I've previously mentioned a few times, so you guys can clear it up in the comments for other people asking, we're moving house. When we move house, uh, I will most likely have a much smaller bedroom than this one. Uh, this is just a temporary move while we build our new house. So we're going from this house to a rental house while we build our new house, which is just a similar version of this, but slightly better tailored towards, you know, bigger room for me, more room for my subs. Um, so in the rental, these subs will either go into storage or I might be selling them. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, in the rental, this little beast right here is probably gonna be the subwoofer I'm gonna be using, because I'm gonna be, not too far away from here, actually. It's about um, probably 500, 400 meters away from this exact house. However, my neighbors will be much closer there. 
uh, meaning I won't be able to turn the sub up as loud. So having a little 10 inch like this on 500 watts is going to be far, far less tempting to turn up loud than these Dayton's just here. Uh, but this is going to get plenty loud. So this will be my sub temporarily while we're in that rental for maybe eight months. Um, while I'm there, I'm probably not going to have too much audio content to be making. Uh, so that's why I'm sort of trying to go into some different sort of styles, some camera stuff, some car stuff, some, you know, <laughs> considering selling my car. Uh, so there'll be more on that later. But uh, let's let's unbox this plate amplifier now too. Let's put this Ultimax to the side. Make sure you can keep it in frame so you guys can keep looking at it. Um, as well as that, I was going to say something else, but now I can't remember. Let's open this plate amp. Uh, yes, I am thinking most likely possibly selling my car right now is the ideal time to do it. Um, because in Australia right now, I can't drive my car by myself. I need parents uh, with me. So, and they both have cars. So I technically right now don't actually even need to have a car. Um, also, the reason I chose this amplifier as well uh, removable cable so I can use a Australian plug instead of the US plug that is provided with it. It also has a switching power supply so I can switch it from 120 volts which is what you guys have in America to 240 and it's actually really quite light. Some big capacitors on the back there. Uh, fairly reasonable size heatsink and that. It's actually a pretty big amplifier. I thought it would be smaller than this to be honest but uh, yeah that's pretty solid. Uh, heat sinks obviously inside of the enclosure, so it would probably be beneficial if I had this as a ported enclosure, which of course I do. There's the subwoofer wire just there, it's tied up nice and neat, so I probably uh, will just strip the ends off this, connect it to the negative and positive of this coil, uh, to, sorry, the negative of one coil and the positive of the other, because uh, this subwoofer will be wired in series because it's a dual, four, a dual two ohm coil. This is a four ohm amplifier, so two ohms uh, per coil in series is a four ohm load on this amplifier, which takes a minimum of four ohms. This is rated to push 500 watts at four ohms. That subwoofer is rated to take 500 watts. So good little combo. Uh, I'm hoping it's gonna be as good as it sounds uh, on paper. So what I might do now is let's just quickly untie these wires here. I might hook this subwoofer up to, if I can untie these wires that is, hook the sub up to the plate amplifier, run some power through it, and we'll start breaking it in and we'll see what sort of power this amplifier can push uh, to the subwoofer. So it's a fair chunk of wire there. I might need to extend that slightly. The negative is actually about five inches shorter than the positive. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so let's hook that up. Now, I haven't really been looking at the camera too much. I've been too inclined as to this. Oh yeah, and what I was saying before is that's why I've been sort of trying to branch down the paths of doing some different content uh, because obviously I'm not going to be doing huge subs like this while I'm in the rental house. Um, but later, um, I don't really want to spoil too much, but let's see, uh, possibly selling these. Um, all I'll say is let's see how good the Ultimaxes are. And uh, I know you guys miss 18s. That's all I'll say. Um, so let's hook this up. Uh, also, I actually think what was I actually was supposed to say earlier, I'm really struggling at the moment to talk in English. Um, there's going to be two builds. Uh, I'm going to have a build video like you normally see, uh, which is just going to be all out music, uh, machinery sounds and building. And uh, then I'm actually going to have a second one this time because a lot of people ask to actually know what I'm doing. So there'll be one video where it'll be this subwoofer being built. And then there'll be a second one where it'll be this subwoofer for being built, but it'll be me with the road mic on my uh, chair, my jumper there, talking about what I'm actually doing and making it more of a how-to video as opposed to just showing you what I'm doing. Uh, that way you guys can follow along uh, much nicer if you want. I'm gonna be putting a lot of effort into this box, making sure it's really nice. I'm gonna be sanding it down, because uh, normally I sand it down with just some 60 and then roll, um, you know, 120 grit paper. And then I just roll on the undercoat, sand that down, another coat of undercoat, sand that down, another coat of undercoat, and then uh, roll on some paint over the top of that, which is normally, I think this is oil based on these speakers here. Um, but what I'm gonna be planning this time is to probably even start sanding down with 400, 800, and uh, spraying on that final coat to try and get this as close to like smooth of a box as possible, because that would look awesome. But now let's hook this sub up. I've said it four times. This is a class D amplifier, by the way. 
So it probably doesn't push exactly 500 watts, which is fine. I really don't need 500 watts going to this little 10 inch sub. Now there are videos of this being pushed on a 7,000 watt amplifier on uh, YouTube. So I don't have any doubts as to the power rating of this subwoofer, but let's actually finally do it. Let's hook this Dayton Ultimax sub up. Here's the discount code. The other one was actually for the earlier months of this year. So go and redeem these codes. I'm pretty sure they're one time use. So go and jump on that right now. But anyway, now we're actually finally going to hook this sub up. All right, so the camera's actually moved down a little bit further and I apologize for that. I just realized how bad my framing is and you can see my mic and whatever. But let's focus on the sub, or the, the sub. Uh, this thing I've just been breaking in for the last half hour. Oh my God, I am so excited for this build. This amplifier is pushing plenty of power to it. Um, note to self, the heatsink on the back of this obviously is grounded or something because I touched it. I went, oh, I wonder how warm this is. And I just about shit myself because there is obviously some sort of current running through it. And it just felt like touching an electric fence. But anyway, subwoofer is really, really nice. Really loving how this thing is performing. Uh, free air even. Uh, obviously sitting like this, there's a fair amount of noise, mechanical noise. Turn it on the side so those ports on the bottom there is uh, completely open and uh, the sub becomes silent. Again, I'm not pushing this thing to its limits, so I don't know the limits of the amp or the sub just yet, purely because this thing's only just brand new, hasn't been broken in yet, and if you know anything about that, basically the surround and the spiders which are in here, uh, basically it will still be very, very stiff, and uh, forcing them to work extremely hard when they are very stiff could possibly strain on the glues and things like that, and possibly risk premature wear and damage. So I'm just gonna break this in now, but, um, Let's uh, let's bring this camera over here, drop the tripod to the ground, and let's get some super clean excursion. Go over to my decaf playlist on YouTube, of course. You can search it up. It's not available on mobile anymore because one of the songs got a copyright claim on it. But search it up on your computer, play it through your subs. Look how low uh, your subwoofer is playing because it's awesome. But let's do that through this Ultimax 10 now. I just, this thing is just unbelievable from this angle, the surround and all that. It's just ridiculous. I'm gonna take a photo as well and share it on my Instagram. So if you guys have seen that, awesome. If you haven't, go and follow me on Instagram and like that photo and let me know. That cone is so solid. I forget what this uh, cone is made out of. I think it's some sort of fiberglass material. Uh, looks like carbon fiber, but it's, I don't think it is. If it is, wow. If it's not, I don't think, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Actually, let me quickly look on Parts Express. All right, so I was correct, it is a, Thick one piece Nomex homeycone, homeycone, wow, honeycomb covered cone with woven heavy duty glass fiber. So it is a glass fiber reinforced cone. I noticed a little bit of the fibers coming off now. When I originally got it, uh, I can see some glass fibers there on my finger, um, but I'm sure after some time that'll go away. That's obviously just from being manufactured and cut to the size. But anyway, close ups, sharing that photo on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you are. Let's see some excursion. super hard because it's not broken in yet but that's got some serious power to it
Alright, so the subwoofer is still breaking in on the floor just there, so if you can hear it going, that's what you can hear. Uh, it's sounding awesome, I can't wait to have this thing in a box, I'm going to start building that very, very soon. Uh, but for now, it's just running free air, breaking it in before I put it in that box. Uh, I'm thinking of investing in a Sony a6300 maybe a bit later uh, for these sort of videos here because after that big tripod just there, after my camera's been on that big tripod, I'm going to try and support my arm now. This is as wide open as I can go as well. Um, after my camera's been on that, it's really, really hard for me to then put the uh, camera on a Gorillapod and all that. So currently I'm holding it by its tripod mount with a battery grip in that, so the camera weighs about two kilos and I'm supporting my arm with the other arm, that's why it looks so close. But I'm considering getting an A6300 uh, because it's gonna weigh about a quarter what this weighs right now and it has a slightly wider lens and uh, the video quality is much better probably. Uh, still using this for all my professional stuff, but using the A6300 for vloggy things. But I gotta make this intro short, sorry, switching arms, uh, outro even. So if you guys are enjoy, uh, excited for that, wanna see more sub builds like this, let me know with a thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Let's just have a look how big, sorry, this is gonna be really dark. That's the camera. Look how frigging big that is. It's so hard to carry. Um, but yeah, so I'll see you in the next one.